Hello everyone, hope you are learning well. So in this video, we'll discuss the last problem of lead code weekly contest 348. It's just a hard level problem and, and a great one to solve a classical problem of digit DP. I'll, I'll let you know that. Okay. So the problem name is count of integers. So the problem says that you are given two numeric strings, num1 and num2 and two integers, max sum and min sum. We denote an integer x to be good if that integer lies between num1 and num2. Remember, these are the two integers or rather strings that are given and the digit sum of that particular number lies between minimum sum and maximum sum okay so two condition needs to be satisfied that string that that number should lie between them these two num1 and num2 and the digit of its sum should lie between min sum and max sum okay return the number of of good integers now since the answer may be large return it modulo 10 raised to power 9 plus 7 Note that digit sum x denotes the sum of the digits of x. Okay. So yeah, I, I hope the problem statement is easy. Okay. Let's go to the example. So num1 is 1, num2 is this 12. Remember these are strings. Okay. And these are pretty large strings. You cannot keep it in uh, a primitive data type, right? Uh, neither int nor long because it's 10 raised to power 22. Now the minimum sum that those integers should have is this 1 and 8 okay so there are 11 such integers okay there are 11 integers whose sum of digit lies between 1 and 8 they are just see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 getting it they lie between 1 and 12 and their digit sum is between 1 and 8 okay so that's the first example the second one is you need to find the strings between 1 and 5 such that their digit sum lies between 1 and 5 okay again this is a simple example 1 2 3 4 5 Okay, these are the five integers, hence your answer is five. Now, if you go to the constraints, the string that are given, rather the number that are given in the string format are pretty large, right? 10 raised to power 22. Can't be stored in a primitive data type. And the digits, the sum of the digits uh, is between 1 to 400, right? So, if you are solving these type of problem for the first time, uh, like I won't say there is any rocket science in this. It's very simple. I would say classically, classical digit DP okay now what do do what do you do here okay because if you're solving it for the first time you need to know this concept right but let me tell you that so forget about this exact problem statement it says that you need to find the number of good slash valid integers okay something what is the condition for good or valid leave it okay but i need to find good or valid integers in a range from a to b okay so remove this a or b for now let's make the problem simple you need to find good or valid integers from 0 to a range let's call it a okay this is an easy problem right because suppose you find you write a function which is able to calculate the number of valid integers from 0 to a particular number so calculate so to calculate this all you need to do is find the good integers from 0 to b find the good integers from 0 to a minus 1 just subtract it you get your answer right simple now comes the question how do you calculate this okay what is the logic to write this function okay so let's start so look let's assume i have a five digit number okay i have a five digit number okay i need to find valid integers from zero to a and let's suppose my a is five six seven nine two something like this okay i need to consider all the numbers smaller than this okay what i'll do here <coughs> To solve this type of problem, these are the indices, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You place valid integers at each, at each position, right? <clears throat> Sorry. You, you place valid integers at each position, right? Not just consider, forget about these. Forget about these. At this particular position, the maximum digit that you can pay, place is 5. Okay? That you can place is 5. So, I can place here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? Now, when you place here 0, 1, 2, 3 or 4, forget about 5 right now. If you place any of these digits, what happens? Irrespective, if, if you place from 0 to 4, you can place any digit here, right? Why is that? Because suppose I write here, I place here 4. So, 4, 9, 9, 9, 9. This obviously is less than this. 5, 6, 9, 2, right? What I mean to say, this is this digit has more weightage as compared to these these digits right it is more significant digit in in a number right so as soon as you place a number place a digit smaller than five here what happens whatever digits you place here the number has to be less than 
this particular number because this place has a lower digit and this has more weightage as compared to these digits right that's the first thing okay this is the case when i place 0 1 2 3 or 4 right the case is simple if you place any of them here you you can uh, try out all the possibilities right what are those possibilities place 0 to 9 here 0 to 9 here 0 to 9 here 0 to 9 here and so on right simple however when you place 5 here then what happens if you place 5 here then you know that okay you know that you need to keep a track of what digits to place here otherwise the resultant number will become larger than this for example if i place 5 here and i place 9999 9, 9, 9 after this then 5999 9, 9, 9 will be greater than this given number and the condition will fail right so what i'll do somehow i will pass this information from this index to further indices that what's the number i have placed here right what's the number i've placed here if i place from 0 to 4 i pass i pass that you can place any digit here if i place 5 here then i pass that i have placed 5 you need to take care what's the maximum digit you are placing because if i place 5 here the maximum digit you can place here is 6 the maximum digit you can place here is still 7 the maximum digit you can place here is still 9 and so on right that's the important thing okay so these are the only two conditions now comes the question how to how to pass this information so passing this information is also easy don't pass the exact exact digits or something like that just take a variable like in my case i have taken a variable tight that whether my bounds are tight or not okay um, that what's the range of integers that i need to take so this this that variable you can take it boolean i have taken integer this the value here if it is one then that means you need to take care of what are the range of digits you are placing however if it is zero then what will happen you can place any digits try out all the digits from zero to nine here zero to nine here zero to nine here zero to nine here, and so on right so that's the core concept using this you can solve any like most of the digit db problem now comes the question okay i'm able to generate all the integers how do i check their validity right so validity is simple validity is simple like in this case i have to check that the digit sum lies between these two values right so when you are passing the value whatever digit you have placed here, suppose the sum till this position was x so if you place here 5 so you pass x plus 5 in the next iteration right in the next recursive call telling that now my sum is this and finally when you reach end of the string right check whether this particular sum lies in the, that range or not if it lies you increment your answer right that is the i would say core logic of how to solve these type of problem i have told you generic things okay let's see how i have solved this problem right i have used exactly the same approach okay this is the first string this is the second string right this is a dp array that i have taken because when i make recursive calls i will be calculating the same thing multiple times so i need to memoize it otherwise i'll be getting tle right basic dp stuff just see what's the first thing i've done i've created a function i've passed num to minimum sum maximum sum whether it's tight or not yes for the first go you have to make it tight right because suppose uh, nums2 is 1 2 3 4 okay so the, at the first place you are bound to place either 0 or 1 getting it so this position will be tight getting it that's why i have passed one here this is the in, this is the sum of digits till now and this is the index right let's go to, to this function it's a very small function okay nothing complex this is the number I have received, the string format. This is the min sum, max sum, whether it's the bounds are tight or not. What's the current sum and what's the index, right? If index equals equals nums total, that means if I have reached at the last index, right? I start from index zero, but if I have reached at the last index, all I need to do is I have calculated the sum of the current uh, string that I have generated. Just check if current sum, this, this is the current sum. If current sum is greater than min sum and it is less than max sum, then return one that yes, it is a valid number else you return zero base case right second thing if you have already calculated the answer right for this particular index for this particular sum for this particular tight bounds okay then just return it just check if it is not equals to minus one that means you have calculated it return the answer right now comes the core logic my answer is zero okay let's check if my bounds are tight what will be the what are the possible digits that i, I can place right so for every position the 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 me the least uh value that i can place there is zero however the max value will change 
if the if the bound is not tight i can place from 0 to 9 if the bound is tight i will place 0 to the character that is present at that particular position okay so if tight equals equals 1 nums dot caret index minus 0 that means if there is a 5 the upper bound will be 5 however if if this is 0 then it will be 9 simple start and end right start will always be 0 end will be this based on this condition okay now start placing those digits. So you start from zero, you go to end current plus plus. What is the new tight value? Meaning, what are the bounds for the next call that I'm making? So if if my bound is tight, okay? If, if the bounds are tight and current equals equals end, meaning that if you were bound, if, if you were uh, asked to check, uh, keep, the place, uh, keep the digits carefully, then yes, the bounds are tight. And if you are at the last digit, meaning, if my digit was 5, I have placed from 0 to 4, but now I am going to place 5. So, tight bound was 1 and I am at the last position. That means I am placing 5. So, the next time, the next iteration is basically 1. It is 1, else it is 0. Getting it? However, if I have placed 0, the next bound will be 0. I mean the new tight will be 0. For 0 to 4, it will be 0. For 5, it will be 1. Remember, this is the value of new tight bound right so that's what i am doing new tight equals to if tight equals equals one and i am at the last digit last possible value that i can place here it will be one else it will be zero okay answer is equals to answer plus solve pass the same string pass min sum max sum the new tight value what's the current sum whatever sum you had till the current index and the new value that you've placed here current sum plus car and index plus one right because now you'll be placing new value at index plus one simple okay your answer can overflow just take mod with mod this is the mod that i have okay there's a mod that i have do it and finally save that into this dpra dp of index curve some tight and return it right your core logic is done simple i hope this point is clear right so these were the two strings this is how i initialize my dpra i calculated for nums2 i th then again uh, made all the values as minus one because i need to calculate it for nums1 now right you remember what i told so I calculated for nums1. Now there is a tricky case here. I have to calculate from A to B. I have calculated from 0 to B. I have calculated from 0 to A. But my answer is actually, my answer would come when I calculate from 0 to A minus 1, right? And then A to B, A to B, I'll be able to get. If I do this 1 and 2, if I do 1 minus 2, I'll get my answer. But since this is a string, right? So doing minus 1 will be a little bit cumbersome. So the best thing is to, calculate this range right calculate answers from 0 to b calculate answers from 0 to a okay if you subtract them you will consider all the numbers from a plus 1 to b i just need to consider a as well right whether it's a valid thing or not so doing subtraction is complex because this is a string what i'll do calculate the digit sum of a get digit sum for nums1 this is the small function that we have written right just check it just check for this number individually if the digit sum is valid, that means it is less than max sum and greater than min sum, increment your answer, right? Instead of doing minus one on a given string, just calculate that value individually, right? Check, calculate the valid validity individually. Now answer mod equals to mod. And finally, you return your answer, right? So that's it for this problem. I would say if you are solving this problem for the first time, yes, in the first go, when you read the problem statement, it may seem complex, but this is a classical example of digit dp okay you can just google it you'll get good resources um there is a resource on code forces okay um and that that resource i found it to be very useful you can probably refer it or any other uh, probably creator would have created it but yeah that's it how so how you solve these type of problems right so yes i hope you learn something new from this video do support it by giving up a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel uh, in case of any queries mention that in the comment section i'll revert on each one of them thank you take care bye bye